So this morning I want to speak to you about something. Where's Tabo? Come here quickly. Bring your phone here quickly. So the Lord has been speaking to me the past few weeks about one specific thing. And you know, I, I don't just come up here and preach. I wait for a confirmation, wait for someone to send me something. There's a build up to this, this thing. Now, he, he didn't know I was going to call him up here. He didn't dress for the occasion, otherwise he would own a suit. <laughs> Test you. Put this one on. Just tell him what you told the youth yesterday. Good morning, Judge. How are you? Oh. <laughs> um, uh, so yesterday, Helman asked me to do uh, the message for the kids' church yesterday, and I was talking Can about... You And I was talking about uh, forgiveness. Um, so according to my understanding, uh, forgiveness um, is accepting um, something that a person has done to you and uh, having it in your heart and taking a decision or a choice um, to forgive them, which is uh, one of the very hardest things to do. And um, I believe that um, we should forgive each other. Uh, because uh, when we pray uh, the Our Father prayer, we say that um, God uh, forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, meaning that forgive us for our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And um, I'm going to read from uh, Matthew 6 verse 12 and it says, and forgive our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And I'll read again from Colossians 3 verse 13, uh, which says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Um, when Jesus Christ came down to earth, um, yes, he healed our diseases and our sicknesses, and he came not only for that, but to also forgive us for our sins. And um, our reason for forgiving is because God's word says, if we forgive, surely our Father in heaven will forgive our sins. And um, even I myself find it very hard to forgive people. Um, it can be something someone does to you and um, it doesn't make you feel happy on the inside. And um, unforgiveness is a factor that contributes towards hatred. And um, hatred is something that's very hard to deal with. Um, so I'm standing here before you to encourage you to forgive. And um, your Father in heaven will forgive you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Test in one. So I didn't want to tell him yesterday that I felt he had to come and speak it because he would have been panicking the whole night. But the whole week the Lord had been speaking to me about forgiveness. Did you hear what he said about forgiveness? It's a choice. You have to make that decision. So a lot of people come to me and say, uh, Pastor Kenneth, please pray that I can forgive this person. Um, no. You decide in your heart, I want to forgive this person. Love is a choice. Do you think, or Dot's been with me 30 years, do you think at any one stage she fell out of love with me? Is it possible? So there's different types of love. But she never fell out of love where she felt that I need to be harmed. If you have a love or a hatred in your heart that is opposite to the word of God, if you're saying, Father, I pray that that person suffers, do you think that's a good prayer? Matthew 6.14 says this. 
This is after the Our Father. This is after Jesus says, pray in this fashion. Pray in this way. He says this. For if you forgive others their trespasses, or their, this is another translation, their reckless and willful sin. Reckless and willful. They might be treating you with recklessness. Or they willfully speak about you. Anybody have someone speak about them? I never have that. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you if you forgive them of their willful sin. Not, oh, by mistake, I bumped your car, or, oh, by mistake, I said this. It's the stuff they said on purpose. It's the money they stole on purpose that you must forgive. That's not an easy one to take, eh? How can it be? Listen to this. But if you do not forgive others... Nurturing your hurt and anger. How many of us have taken something people have said about us and nurtured it in our heart? But Pastor Kenneth, you don't know what they called me. You don't know what they've done. If you nurture that thing within your heart, you start feeding that thing. It gets bigger, bigger, till there's no space for anything else. He says this. If you nurture and hurt, uh, uh, your hurt and anger with the result that it interferes with your relationship with God, then your Father will not forgive your trespasses. Wow. Wives, you cannot keep saying to your husband, but do you remember when? Do you remember when? His perfect response would be, Jesus forgot. How do you still remember if you've got Christ within you? It's not easy because even myself still deal with hurts from the past. This is the key. Always remind yourself of what has been forgiven of you. Would any one of you like us to put on the screen a picture of your life sin? Anybody? Because we can do it. It might take a very long time for some of you. You see, someone's got it. Amen. So listen to this. How do you know you have been forgiven? Peace, yeah? When you're forgiven, yeah? One key. Change happens. If you've got a revelation of being forgiven, your life will change. You will forgive others. When you go through your life and you say, this is what God has forgiven me of, Guess what happens when somebody does something to you? You go, okay, it hurt me. It's sore. But you know what? I forgive that person. Do you know that a lot of the stuff that you're hanging on to, that people have said and done about you, they've forgotten. They're hanging on, living a lack of life. Nice. When you mention it to them, they go, what? I never said that. How many times have I sat with people to try and reconcile a relationship. And somebody says, but this is what he done. And he goes, I never did that. I never did that. Misunderstanding, a sore in the heart, a little pimple, becomes a festering sore. And guess what? You sitting there stressing, hating, angering, burdening. That person don't even know. They just see how you're miserable. You know, there's a, a thing that women do. Are you okay, Dot? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Later on that evening, you don't understand me. Like, what, what? But I told you I was not fine. No. Sorry. Sorry for what? Yo. I have no idea. No clue. Sorry, Dot, for the stuff I'm going to do in the week. It's just me. It happens. It's part of my makeup. So listen up. Do you know that that joy that you have will be stolen out of your heart because of unforgiveness? When you say, I am going to forgive him, but I will never forget... 
It's like saying I'm going to go and have a, a scar cut off or a, a mole cut off my body, but I'll never forget that mole. I've got a sore tooth, I'm going to have it pulled out, but I'll never forget that tooth. You cannot say I'm going to forgive. Listen, that thought might come back. It might come back, that person done that. Then you make that decision to say, you know what, I've dealt with this thing. And if you can't, if you're battling with that, you need to find someone to speak to. Because a lot of times, unforgiveness burdens because you've never spoken it out. You never said, but you know what they did to me? This is the stuff they did to me. Sometimes you need that human being. Be careful who you choose, because they might be the next person you have to forgive. So choose well. Choose that person wisely. So forgiveness brings change. Okay. Colossians 1.13. I'm going to go quickly through Colossians. I'm going to speak for five minutes and then it says this. We were once under the power of darkness, but now you are in his glorious power. Colossians 1.11. It says you were alienated enemies minded by wicked works. Colossians 1.21. But now you are qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You are partaking in Christ Jesus. You are partakers of his light. So let me tell you this. I don't know a Christian that has come to that place where they had a doubt. They all come to that place where they say, oh, I don't know. Do you know why? Because you start relying on your self-work. You start relying on your goodness. You start relying on the things you do. And then you realize, but I'm not good enough. You realize that the things you do can never amount to the cross. Jesus spent six hours on that cross for your sin, for your forgiveness. You see, many churches speak about giving. Give money, give time, give of your alms, give, 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 give. The only thing they don't like to speak about is forgiveness, which you have to give. You see, giving money... It's not an easy thing, if, especially if you work hard and you don't have much. You, you, like, Yo. It's the same with forgiveness. You're like, sure, I don't know if I can do this, but it's for your own good. When you forgive, he says, not maybe if, you know, I'll give you a suggestion. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't say, you know what, love your neighbor as long as he's the same color or the same, the same standing. And I'm not talking about romantic love your neighbor. Eh? I'm talking about love them that you feed them. Not love your neighbor's wife. Because it's happening. So, it says this, you were cheated through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the elementary principles of the world. In other words, the world stuff, the, the stuff they come with philosophies and, you know what, are there aliens? And, you know, is God just love? Is God light? As long as you preach or speak to the light, you're going to be fine. They alienate you. Okay, it brings you to a place, it says, but now you are brought into the riches and the fullness assurance of understanding and to the knowledge of the mysteries of Almighty God. You as the sons of disobedience before, whom the wrath of God is coming on because of their trespasses. If you do not receive Christ Jesus, that is what you will get. It is the wrath of Almighty God. Do you know what wrath is? It's when he, he, he destroys. Pastor Kenneth, God doesn't do that anymore. If you do not have him in your heart, you are destroyed already. Churches don't like to preach that because people leave it's too harsh. If you have not received Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior and said, I'm a sinner, I need him, you are going to a place of destruction. God is coming because of these trespasses. It says, but now you are the chosen of God, the holy and beloved, forgiven of all trespasses, Colossians 3.12 and Colossians 2.13. You are the forgiven of Almighty God. That means this great turmoil, this destruction that was going to come upon you has been taken off. Why? Not because of anything you've done. 
But you know what happens when that happens? You automatically start saying, I need to forgive him. I need to forgive her. My wife had to forgive me of stuff, a long list, an embarrassing list. So I want to ask you today, what is that one thing? Because let me tell you this, if you've got one little thing of unforgiveness there, it breeds hatred. Hatred is, a, Jesus said hatred is the same as murder. So you're allowing that unforgiveness to boil inside of you and just build up and there's no other space for anything else. If there's hatred in you that's grown so much, even God can't be there. He said that. So I want to challenge you this morning. What is that one person, that one thing that has been said, that one thing that has been stolen from you? I don't know what it is. But today we're going to deal with it. I want everyone to stand quickly. Father, this morning, I saw four people that came up here to testify. And one thing they have in common is that they continually dealing with forgiveness for things people have said to them. That people have done, people have taken, people have stolen. They continue to hurt them. But every day they get up and they say one thing. I choose to forgive today. So right now, I just ask that the Holy Spirit touch your heart in such a way that you know that one thing that you've never dealt with. The one thing that is in your heart. Perhaps you feel unforgiven. Perhaps you're the one that feels, I need forgiveness this morning. If that is you, you need to have a serious conversation with the Lord. If it means that you have to go and ask someone and tell someone, listen, this is what I've done, please forgive me. Father, this morning I ask your Holy Spirit to touch every heart here that they would know that you're just waiting with open arms, willing to help and guide them through this. You are the one that will strengthen them to forgive that other person. Whatever it might be, whatever it is right now, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. I give you that ability to say, you know what, I'm done with this thing. It's holding me back. I can't go on anymore. The pain is too much. Father, right now, we just set your people free in this place. For those that are on the edge of thinking, do I need Jesus? Do I, do I really need to submit myself totally to him? Father, right now, I just speak life over that situation. We thank you, Lord, for the cross. We thank you for your shed blood. We thank you for the beating that you took, the whipping that you took, the lies and the, the words that they spoke against you that were not true. All of that you took for us, Lord. And right now, we make the decision to give it on to someone else. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this place. We thank you for the things that are going to be happening in this place in the next year or two, Father. We just bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen.